All right. Now, just as Psalm 90 was a, an annual chronology of 350 years, that's the second layer of accounting in Psalm 90. First, it was a panoramic accounting of time. And Isaiah corresponds to that. Okay, they both balance to Messiah's scheduled death in 37 AD, as I showed you in the Psalm 90 playlist. Okay, but they're also doing an annual accounting from the time they write to the end. Now, Psalm 90 stops here because in the annual accounting, this point here is so pivotal that there might not be a future history. All right? So this goes to the time of the end of the judges, and if Israel misvotes, that's why this is 84 syllables instead of 70, and that's why this is 56. If Israel screws up, then there won't be any future. That's why it's debited like that. And Isaiah reflects that when he does these 56s, which I have not yet really explained, but will be explaining in future videos. All right? 56s are warning periods. Now what Isaiah is doing is he's answering by year. He's updating the same kind of style that Moses follows when Moses does the annual meaning of the chronology. Okay, you got the panoramic all-time meaning of the chronology which is talking about the two houses, and specifically Israel's house of 2,100 years. Now Isaiah is updating that because it's, he's writing 700 years later. How is it going to work? All right. Well, here's David. He's passed now at the time Isaiah writes. Died at 77. So this period roughly corresponds to David's testimony, as you'll see in future videos. Isaiah's own period of voting is right here. Just the first clause in Isaiah 53, 1, which in English reads, who was believed, who has believed our report? Well, at the time Isaiah is writing this verse, this clause, the one who believed his report was Hezekiah. And at the end of, this is nine syllables here, I don't know if you can see it, but you will see it in future videos, I cover it. Um, at nine years after Isaiah writes this is when Sennacherib tries to invade. And that takes a period of two years, from 703 B.C. to 701 B.C. And because Hezekiah voted, and of course Isaiah is writing this with hindsight, you know. He's writing this after Sennacherib has left, but he's starting the chronology back at 712 B.C. That's a more proper way of saying it, because he is writing this with hindsight. It's Hezekiah who listened to him, and because he listened to him, Sennacherib left. That was at the end of um, Isaiah, 53, 7, uh, Isaiah 37. So he's writing this as of 712 B.C. He's starting his own testimony at 712 B.C., but that's in the past relative to when he's writing it. All right? So at the end of that, that's nine syllables. That's when Sennacherib had come and left, had come. And then the rest of this is future to when Isaiah writes because this, Isaiah 53, 1 through 2, brings you down to the time when Manasseh gets taken away by Assyria and has his change of heart toward God. He stops being apostate. So at the end of 53.2, Isaiah st um, Manasseh will stop being apostate. But Manasseh wasn't even, well, Manasseh was alive at that time. I think he was alive at that time. Yeah, because he was Hezekiah's youngest son. Maybe not his youngest son, but yeah, youngest son. All right, so this was supposed to help Manasseh, uh, you know, be warned which he didn't listen to. But apparently, when he gets taken to Assyria here, at the end of Isaiah 53, 2, is that period, he remembers, okay? And he, he, you know, humbles himself before God. You'll see that in a future video. And he changes his mind. So that Isaiah 53, 3, and 4, 3, covers here the first two parts the first two clauses cover the remainder of Manasseh's reign when he was a good boy and cover the first 18 years of Josiah's reign because in the 18th year of Josiah they find the Bible they had lost it it was in the temple Jeremiah is the guy who finds it you'll see that in a future video okay so this first two clauses in Isaiah 53 3 covers the last half well not the last half but the last fourth of um, Manasseh's reign and the two years of his son Ammon. And then Josiah is the grandson of Manasseh, and these are the first 18 years of his reign. 
Okay, as a result, Israel gets another 35 years. That's verse 4, Isaiah 53, 4. See how this is an annual chronology? And so the last half of Josiah's reign, roughly, is covered in the first two clauses. And then his, his sons, who aren't so good, are covered all the way down to the end of verse 4. The end of verse 4 is 586 B.C. Okay? Because Isaiah has been predicting Babylon will take over. That's at the end of Isaiah 39. So he's now laying out the timeline corresponding to the way Moses did it in Psalm 90 to answer Moses, to show that Messiah will still come, and to warn Israel of what she's going to do wrong in the future. So she could use, if she memorized like she was supposed to, that's Deuteronomy 31, uh, verses 10 through 11, she was supposed to have all this memorized. And as she memorized it, she would remember, oh, okay, this is about David. Okay, this goes to from Hezekiah to Manasseh. Okay, this is a little history lesson that is given to her in advance. Okay, and this, this, this covers, you know, from Manasseh changing his mind to Josiah changing his mind. And that's why we got these 35 years. And oops, the temple ended because. All right, she was told this in advance. And then after it happened, she could look back and remember her history that way. And remember that it's still all tied to Messiah since Isaiah 53 is tied to Messiah. You, you with me on this? Isn't this amazing? And if you're remembering the Hebrew, this becomes very easy to remember. The Hebrew is very easy to remember, much easier than English. Okay? Now, this is 586 B.C. right here. That's when the temple goes down. So Isaiah continues his chronology to show you the timeline of what he's already predicted. He's not only telling you what's going to happen, he tells you for how long. And the period from 586 to 530 B.C. covers Cyrus. Okay, that's when Cyrus rises, and that's when Cyrus falls. 530 B.C. is when he dies. It's this tumultuous period, which is the period during which the temple starts to be reconstructed. Okay? And its reconstruction takes place in two phases. During this period of the 56 years, they will spend one year building it. And they've still got six years left to build it. So the twelve tribes, this is so clever, the twelve tribes, it's the last clause in Isaiah 53, 6, will be in the land. So that's a, like a healing. All right, but they've still got six years to rebuild the temple. Okay, because everybody's going on his own way. That's the second clause in Isaiah 53, 6. They're going their own way rather than building the temple. So the temple is six years short. Do you see how clever the math is? You see how easy if you were memorizing this in Hebrew, how you could figure out the meaning and, and know where you were in time? All right, future or past? This is how we can know their past too. All right, but the temp this takes you therefore to 530 B.C. This is the period of Daniel and Ezekiel and all the stuff that goes on to get the temple rebuilt and all the trouble Okay, this is this is how Daniel 9.25 plays. It will be rebuilt, but in times of trouble. That takes you to, to 530 B.C. It's not yet over yet because 516 is the end of the 70 years. Okay, so now you got the 70 years breaking. Oh, just about, let's see, 530 to 516. Um, right here, first three clauses in Isaiah 53.7. So the temple gets rebuilt by this point. And then it's still a question of Jerusalem getting rebuilt. And this balances to 460 B.C., which is where the 56 in Psalm 90 stops. All right. So Isaiah crafts to balance so that you can look at the end of verse 8, see how it ties in character to the Mosaic voting period, but also see how in a straight chronology, it ties to the 460 B.C. warning. Alright, so he's elaborating on how verses 16 and 17 get done. Now, that brings us to the last two 70s here. Alright. One of the two 70s is a reimbursement of the first 70, which I'll, I've covered in my web pages, but I haven't covered in my videos. This is 
another way of stating the same voting period that Israel's going to have in the future was going to have then about rebuilding Jerusalem. Remember the temple is down here. Okay? But in order to do the straight chronology, he had to sort of break up time. This shows to 530. Alright? And this shows to 460. 